All throughout recorded history, there have been numerous cultures, each with their own, distinct ways of life, but there has been one thing they have each had in common, skincare. Hi everyone, Ken here. Today we are exploring Liliothea. Make sure to hit that like button to let YouTube know you enjoy videos about historic homes, and let's begin uncovering the story of this house. It might seem like skincare routines are a modern day phenomenon, but all throughout history, people have tried to hold on to their youth by taking care of their skin. Whether it was the ancient Egyptians rubbing honey and carob on their wrinkles, or European women in the Middle Ages powdering their faces, every major culture, at some point, developed a skincare routine, including the United States. In the late 1800s, George Robert White became the president and owner of Potter Drug and Chemical Company. While he manufactured and produced many products, his company gained recognition for Cuticura, a medicated antibacterial soap. George ran an aggressive advertising campaign, claiming that his soap could not only be used for cleansing, but could treat a variety of ailments. Whether someone wanted to reduce wrinkles, treat acne, cure dry skin, or even rid themselves of syphilis, Cuticura was touted as the cure-all remedy. The ads he ran mostly featured and targeted women, regardless of social class, with underlying messages of being a responsible mother and achieving beauty and purity. This campaign was so successful that by the turn of the century, Cuticura had become a household name. Over time, however, George's wild claims began to draw scrutiny from medical professionals in the scientific community, leading both the American Medical Association and the British Medical Journal to dismiss his claims for anything other than basic hygiene, only calling it a good grade of soap. Nonetheless, Cuticura continued to see its sales increase, leading George to amass a fortune. In 1912, he purchased this house in Manchester-by-the-Sea, Massachusetts, and hired the architecture firm of Bigelow and Wadsworth to renovate and enlarge it. As the house was being expanded, crates of bricks were imported from France to give the house a more authentic appearance akin to a French chateau. Furthermore, the stately mansion overlooking the sea was trimmed in Indiana limestone and appointed by copper finials and gutters. The same limestone was then carved by 28 artists to create intricate entablatures, ornate balustrade, and delicate adornments. Though of all the exterior craftsmanship, perhaps the columns were given the most attention. Particularly, the loge's columns supporting a series of rib groin vaults inlaid with bricks in a herringbone pattern. The interior continued with dazzling displays of artisanry, with the upper mantle of the living room's fireplace blending perfectly into the ceiling's intricate design. Next, we will cut across to the dining room to find imported Russian walnut panels glowing in the golden light of the electric chandelier. Though perhaps more dazzling is the rounded breakfast room with stained glass transoms and an oculus allowing for natural light to flood the space. The house only becomes more impressive as we continue deeper into its interior, finding the den overflowing with gothic tracery. The sun parlor mirrors the den with a nearly identical ceiling, though if we look closely, we will find noticeable differences in the details. George and his family continued to enjoy summers at Liliothea until his passing in 1922 when the family sold the estate. Before his passing, he left a considerable amount of money to various charities and for the creation of public monuments, such as Boston Public Garden's Angel of the Water. Even now, over 100 years later, his contributions continue to enrich the Audubon Boston Nature Center through the George Robert White Environmental Conservation Center. Thankfully, Liliothea continues to stand proudly to this day. Which part of the mansion was your favorite? Let me know down below in the comments section. And while you're there, make sure to hit the subscribe button so you never miss an exciting episode of This House.